Whenever there is decay of righteousness and the rise of unrighteousness, then I embody myself for the protection of the good, for the destruction of the wicked, and for the establishment of righteousness, I am born age after age, says Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. The blissful mother, Sri Ananda Ma, once said, I exist before there is any creation, duration, or dissolution of the world. I am conditioned as well as unconditioned. I am neither infinite nor confined within limits. I am both at the same time. And though the dance of creation changes around me, in the hall of eternity I shall be the same. India has been, from time immemorial, the cradle of innumerable saints and messengers of God. Stretching out from the summits of the Himalayas to the plains of the south, this country encompasses, like a great mother, people of many languages and religious beliefs. India calls her religion Sanatana Dharma, the eternal law, which presents itself to the outer spectator in vividly colorful variations. It ranges from the ancient sacrificial rites to the perfected techniques of self-control and meditation, and climbs to the philosophical heights of the Upanishads. Her religious heritage is rooted in the Vedas, which means absolute knowledge. Not a century passes in which this country does not bring forth a being who incorporates the knowledge of the divine in living fullness. The devotees regard such a being as a crystallized form of God's grace, having come to show mankind the right path in times of darkness. The blissful mother, Sri Anandamai Ma, Born in East Bengal in 1896, is one of the few perfect beings who are fully conscious of their eternal self from birth onwards. Most mystics have to pass through times of darkness, seeking and struggling before their enlightenment. But Ma was conscious right from the beginning of what she had always been and would always be. This consciousness never left her for even a second. Her God-realization did not depend on the effect of some special grace outside herself, but was inherent in her nature. Realization already existed in her in fullness, and there was no need for any effort from her side, nor for some grace from above to bring about greater perfection. Already as a child of three years, she was often found absorbed in a trance-like state doing religious chanting or kirtan. Sometimes, in the middle of her playing, she would suddenly become like a statue. At other times, she talked with trees, animals, or invisible beings. According to Indian custom at that time, a suitable husband was selected for Ma by her parents and she was married at the age of 12 to Bolanat. After several years, she went to live with him. He found Ma surrounded by such an aura of awe-inspiring holiness that marital relations were completely excluded by it. From 1917 to 1923, something like a play of spiritual practices, Sadhana Lila, occurred in Ma's life. Usually yoga is practiced with the aim to realize one's higher self, or God. But for Ma, there wasn't anything to be obtained, as she had never been 
unaware of the Divine Presence. She said, Let me tell you that what I am I have been from my infancy. But when the different stages of sadhana were being manifested through this body, there was something like a superimposition of ignorance. But what sort of knowledge was this? It was really knowledge masquerading as ignorance. God's name constantly resounded within her. Sometimes her body spontaneously assumed very complicated yoga postures. At other times, people were healed of a sickness by her mere touch, although she had not the intention. In the full moon of August 1922, some sort of self-initiation occurred. A mantra revealed itself from within, and something like the subtle form of a guru emanated from her own body, and after the initiation, dissolved into it. Her body was lifted up from the ground by an invisible power. In the following months, mantras and hymns in Sanskrit often came from her lips, although she had not spoken this language before. The normal functioning of her body was suspended for hours and even days. Her days were not divided into mornings, evenings, and nights. There was only one prolonged period of indescribable bliss. In her mouth she felt a honey-like substance coming from within, so much that she had to swallow it. There followed a three-year period of silence, which excluded even gestures, and was only interrupted sometimes by her drawing an imaginary circle around herself with her right index finger, pronouncing some mantras, and then saying something in a soft voice. She then wiped out the circle and became silent again. For months she only partook of a fingertips portion of food daily, and at the end of 1924, Ma completely stopped feeding herself, as her hands often used to stop halfway to her mouth, or the food slipped through her fingers. Fearing she would leave her body, her devotees continued to feed her. She would never have taken something of her own initiative, or have asked someone to feed her. Ma said, I look upon all hands as my own. In fact, I always eat with my own hands. Sometimes, such a brilliant light emanated from Ma that she covered her body with an additional cloth and withdrew for a long time. Daily kirtan, the singing of the glories of God, was sung in the house of Ma and Bolanat in Dhaka. During that time, Ma often went into states of ecstasy to such an extent that sometimes her body rolled on the ground like a leaf. At other times, it danced gracefully, hardly touching the ground at all, or sat quietly without moving, like a luminous statue. People had the awe-inspiring feeling that they were in the presence of a goddess. After the trance, mantra-like hymns emanated from her lips. Sometimes her face was overflowing with tears and showed a radiant smile at the same time. At the mere sight of fire, water, or the sky, her body seemed to become identified with these elements. During storms, she felt impulses to let her body float off like a thin piece of cloth. Hearing the prolonged sound of a conch, her body became as if frozen, like a marble statue. Whenever any impulse like this passed through her consciousness, Immediately, a corresponding physical expression manifested through her entire body. Sometimes she remained in samadhi for days without responding to external stimuli, and no pulse could be registered. She observed, it is a state beyond all conscious and superconscious planes, a state of complete immobilization of all thoughts, emotions, and activities both physical and mental, a state that transcends all the phases of life here below. She also said, this body has not followed only one particular line of sadhana, 
but has passed through all the different varieties of practices referred to by the sages of ancient times. In order to attain a particular stage along one of those lines of sadhana, an ordinary individual may have to be born again and again, but in the case of this body, it was a matter of a few seconds. Moreover, the different forms of sadhana that this body has been seen to practice were not meant for this body, they were meant for you all. Your strong desire to see this body in states of samadhi causes its symptoms to manifest at times. At the same time, she said that she had not revealed even one thousandth of a part of all that had happened during this play of spiritual practices. From 1932 to 1982, Ma traveled almost incessantly throughout India, especially India. At the railway stations, a crowd of people usually gathered in front of her train at departure time. Sometimes her journey took one, two, or three days. Whenever Ma used to visit one of the ashrams, many devotees and disciples gathered to obtain her darshan, which means to be blessed by being in her presence. They participated in religious gatherings where spiritual songs and holy scriptures were recited. Ma never gave lectures, but would answer questions asked by her devotees. When someone called her a guru, she said she was only a little girl and was already connected with all through the atma, or self. She saw the divine in each being. There was no duality of knowing or not knowing a person for her. Nevertheless, she accepted the questions of her devotees and answered as a guru would for those seeking guidance and spiritual advice from her, and she directed everybody in a unique way on the path which was in tune with their inner self, be it through words or through silence. Consciousness differed completely from our consciousness. She excelled in dealing with all the matters of our mundane world, such as cooking, cleaning, receiving guests, and taking care of the necessary arrangements for a spiritual function. She performed these tasks with exacting precision and care in a very short time. <laughs> The worship a disciple offers his master is something intimate and sacred for a devotee. Often foreigners are not permitted to be present, and we are asking the spectators to look at these unusual scenes with respect and a pure heart, which is expected from us by those who allowed us to take these pictures. <laughs> Oh, no. 
day in the life of the ashrams is Ma's birthday. At night the fruits and presents are going to be offered to God and will be distributed as prasad on the following day. During the nightly worship, Ma's consciousness has completely withdrawn itself from the body and outside world being absorbed in samadhi. After sunrise, the eldest disciples lead her back into her room, followed by her own mother, who is greatly respected by all. Some minutes later, Ma is radiating such youthfulness and joy, it's as if she were reborn. She is distributing sweets to all. a place at the feet of the Lord and nowhere else. Take great care to spend your life in spotless purity, worthy to be dedicated in worship to the Lord. Speak about Him, meditate on His glory, try to see Him in everyone, Him who is the Self, the breath of life, the heart of hearts.
law unified all lines of religious beliefs, philosophies, teachings, and yoga methods within herself. I don't have any special path, she said. All paths are my path. Many devotees received, and even now continue to receive, advice from Ma in their dreams, or even a mantra. Almost everyone realizes the expression of his own particular spiritual goal being personified within Ma, and receives support on his own unique spiritual path. Her essential teaching happens in silence and through silence. A peace which can't be comprehended by reason radiates from her entire being. Mother, why do you allow these people to crowd round your body? Perhaps this body draws them so close to it, it is not their fault. Don't you find it highly oppressive and disgusting? No. It is a great pleasure to find them pressing so close to me. Ma, we feel it awfully boring to have such a crowd pestering around us with their domestic troubles and worries. Because you feel your own body and theirs are distinctly separate, as you do not feel the weight of your head, of hands and feet, of so many fingers and toes, of legs and thighs, to be a burden nor a heavy load upon yourself, because you feel they are but vital parts of your own body, so do I feel that these persons are all organic members of this body. So I don't feel their pressure nor find their worries weighing upon me. Vrindavan, about three hours south of New Delhi, was the site of the childhood days of Sri Krishna, 5,000 years ago. Many old temples and innumerable shrines were built here in honor of Krishna. Many historic places are closely connected with incidents in Krishna's life, and from some direction or another, one almost always hears the names of God. Nature is almost untouched here, and peacocks run around freely. Monkeys are seen playing and frolicking in the trees, on the temples, everywhere uninhibited. Life in the countryside has apparently remained the same for centuries. Visiting a holy place like Vrindavan is especially conducive to awakening bhakti, devotional love for God, in the heart of a pilgrim. 
Figures are being artistically and carefully carved for a new temple. Maz Ashram in Vrindavan is situated at some distance from the main road coming from Atura and is surrounded by flower gardens and trees. Maz Ashram in Vrindavan is situated at some distance from the main road coming from Atura and is surrounded by flower gardens and trees. Many visitors are already waiting to offer garlands to Ma which she returns to them with her blessings. Time, Ma and her party have accepted the invitation of a Maharaja to visit him in his private residence. advises people to repeat God's name as frequently as possible so that their consciousness becomes purified and unattached and finally remains 
spontaneously and constantly in God's presence. She says, the meditation and the holy name that appeals to you most, that you should practice in order to attain to supreme peace and bliss. Whatever word or name you love most and which expresses God to you, that word or mantra will take you to him. By uninterrupted, regular repetition of God's name, you will at some auspicious moment continually hear within yourself the praises of the great master, the Lord of creation, like the never ceasing music of the boundless ocean. You will hear the land and the sea, the air and the heavens reverberate with the song of his glory. This is called the all-pervading presence of his name. constantly traveling if you have attained perfect peace. If I stayed at one place, one could ask the same question, isn't it so? Father, don't you know that I'm a very restless little girl and I can't stay at one place? This is one answer. From another perspective, I can also say that it's only you who sees me traveling from place to place. In reality, I'm completely unmoving. I don't move at all. Many people seek my company in diverse ways, so it is for them that this body has to move from place to place. Of course, persons who can do japa and meditation in the quietude of their own abode, whose restless mind has come to some extent subdued, who are self-composed and calm, for them it is different. But persons with an unsteady mind get the chance to attain peace of mind, at least for some time, when they have the opportunity of the physical presence of this body in their midst. This explains their ardor for personal contact with this body. Do those who live continuously near you receive more grace than others? In God's grace, there is no differentiation. Just as a mother looks upon all her children with equal affection and care, she gives food to the child who needs it. If anyone suggests that the mother shows partiality, this is not correct. And it is possible to live for a long time in the close proximity of sages and saints, sadhus and mahatmas, without being able to recognize their true quality. For as one who has the adhikara, the inner qualification, who is inwardly prepared and ready for such a contact, may come from a great distance and within a few minutes know the great and holy for what they are and derive great benefit in a short time. It depends on one's capacity to penetrate to the essence of things.
तुम लोग समझो अभी तुम लोग बेगुन तो आ गया यहाँ तो उठा नहीं <laughs> बेगुन तो आ गया अभी समझो सुनो बात सुनो कभी कभी एक बात कही थी किसी को अभी तुम लोग बात ऐसा स्थान पे आ गया तो बात यह है जैसा गांधी में चढ़ के ये जा रहा कैलाश जा रहा बद्री नारायण जा रहा और घर का बड़ी याद आ रहा लेकिन पोचा दे दो तुमको बद्री नारायण कैलाश है ना इसीलिए बाबा जो कहती है बैकुन तो आ गया मन में चल रहा सत्संग में मने सत्य स्वरूप जी भगवान भगवान सत्संग सब कथा मैंने भगवान का संग होता है जितना भाव इतना लाभ जितना <laughs> देर बस सत्संग में सदभाव The Sri Sri Mata Anandamai Ashram in Konkal is situated at the outskirts of the Holy Pilgrimage Center Hardwar by the Ganga. The hills around Hardwar are the beginning of the foothills of the Himalayas. Anyone to whatever faith or sect he may belong is given by this body whatever help he requires on his own path. It is his own self that is assisting him, if only he will be good enough to accept the assistance. <coughs> Oh, 
1980, a great Vedic fire ceremony was performed for world peace and was inaugurated by a festive procession through the streets of Hardwar. The special guest of honor was the Shankaracharya of Sringeri, one of the highest religious dignitaries of India. Many sadhus sannyasis and mahatmas were attending this function. The priests assembled here were in charge of performing the sacrificial rites. Kumari Puja, the Divine Mother of the Universe, is being worshipped in the form of 108 little girls who are offered food and clothes.
Ma's birthday is being celebrated. At the highlight of the puja, all personal attributes of Ma seem to melt into samadhi. What is the meaning of Ma's birthday? According to the Vedanta Shastra, nobody is born and nobody dies. Ma says, this body says that it was not born. Sri Krishna was not born in the way you were born, yet people are celebrating his birthday. By celebrating such occasions, there is an increase of devotion, true knowledge and satsang among devotees, and therefore I do not object to these activities. I enjoy them as others enjoy them. function for Ma's disciples and devotees is the yearly Samyam Sapta, a week of self-restraint. It is often attended by several hundred persons. On the first and last day of this week, one only partakes of Ganga water. On the other days, one simple meal. There were also three collective meditations each day in which Ma often participated. It is advised to concentrate on God as intensely as possible throughout the day. Mahatmas give lectures on spiritual subjects. Kirtana, the singing of God's praises, is also done. Ma used to answer questions in the evening. She said, Therefore, in order to reveal your immortality, to bring to light that you are the offspring of the immortal, that you are deathless in essence, you are practicing sadhana, and are all taking part in the samyam sapta. Why samyam? Self-restraint? Without leading a life of self-restraint, the road to God-realization does not open out. Pita Hehita is a special song which is only recited once a year after the meditations of Samyam Sapta. It was revealed to Ma during the first Samyam Sapta in 1953.
between the lectures, Ma sometimes came out in front of the tent to give darshan to the devotees. What is real darshan? To see that which when seen, the wish to see anything more vanishes forever. To hear that which when heard, the desire to hear anything else does not awaken anymore. I am ever with each one of you, wherever you happen to be. But your vision is tied down to worldly matters, and you have little time to direct your eyes to this body in all your thoughts and actions. What can I do? But know it for certain that whatever you do in thought and deed, whether you are near or in distant lands, never escapes my attention. Just as a flash of torchlight, your faces gleam forth in their bold outlines. All your facial expressions appear in my mind when you meditate on me, or talk about me, or sit down to pray to me. At the end of Samyam Sapta, a fire ceremony, Havan, takes place, where Vedic mantras are recited and ghee, clarified butter, is offered into the fire. Mm -hmm. 
On August 27th, 1982, Ma took Maha Samadhi and left her body at the age of 86 years. Her blissful presence continues to be felt in the hearts of all those who sincerely follow the path of God-realization.
साधना करना जॉब करना ध्यान करना सब ग्रंथ पाठ करना जितना ऐसा ऐसे का काम ना करो दफ्तर का काम ना करो ऐसा नहीं दफ्तर का काम तो पूरा इट इज द प्योर अंडिफाइड फ्लावर Take great care to spend your life in spotless purity. Our mercy to be dedicated in worship to the Lord. Speak about Him. Meditate on His glory. Try to see Him in everyone. Him who is the self, the breath of life, the heart of hearts. You feel lonely. In very truth, you are not alone. Does the supreme friend ever forsake his friend? Gopal Krishna 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 Gopal
one of you, wherever you happen to be, but your vision is tied down to worldly matters, and you have little time to direct your eyes to this body and all your thoughts and actions. What can I do? But know it for certain that whatever you do in thought and deed, whether you are near or in distant lands, never escapes my attention. Just as at a flash of torchlight, your faces gleam forth in their bold outlines. All your facial expressions appear in my mind when you meditate on me, or talk about me, or sit down to pray for me. जो आराम नित्य भोग करके आया उसे ख्याल करना चाहिए कि हम अगर परमात्म चिंतन में अभिस्तर पे मन लगाऊंगा आशा है हमारा वही दुनिया से खेत से मन इजारी आ जाएगी ऐसा आने का आशा है तो सब जोगी है जोगिनी है और साधक है साधिका है ये सब बीज अपने अंदर में मौजूद रहा है तो मौजूद रहा है उसको प्रकट कोई चाल इस चाल में जैसा हो रहा तपस्या हो रहा ये जो कष्ट करके बैठती है कब कहेंगे ये जो तपस्या है ये ये तो साधना है तपस्या है जितना कष्ट करके भी बैठे कष्ट तो होना ही चाहिए और कैसे सुंदर है ये कष्ट भगवान के लिए कष्ट करने से इष्ट मिलेंगे इष्ट बने तुम्हारा अनिष्ट चल जाएगा Ahora sí, vamos. Vamos, vamos. 